All right, hello geometry students, Mr. Zazik. We're recording here. I'm teaching a lesson. We got an actual class here as we're doing this, but um, welcome to unit 11. So the question that we're going to answer today is how do we write the equation of a circle if we know the center and the radius? And we're going to do that by using the Pythagorean theorem to derive this equation. So we often will represent the Pythagorean theorem with a squared plus B squared equals C squared. What kind of triangle do we have to have in order to use the Pythagorean theorem? Right triangle. Okay, that's correct. So in our circle here, I'm going to just pick some point, and I have no idea what the coordinates of that point are. We're going to call it X, Y. So the length, what do we call the length from the center of a circle to a point on the circle. That's the radius. Good. Now, um, in, if we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, we have to draw a right triangle. Okay. So if we drew a right triangle, we would call this A, this B, and this side C. So what is A? Well, A is essentially the change in the x value. And if you think of the distance formula where we do x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1, that's the change in x and the change in y. So this first point right here, this is like our x1, y1. This is like our x2, y2. So again, A, how do we do the change? X2, which is just X, minus X1, which is H. So that would be X minus H. What would the change in B? How do we do that? Y2 minus Y1. What's Y2? Y minus y1 is k. All right, so now we're going to substitute those things into our a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a squared is x minus h. So we have x minus h quantity squared plus b, which is y minus k quantity squared equals c, which is the radius, which will be r squared. So we've just come up with the equation for the center of a circle. It's also known as center radius form, where the center is the point hk, and the radius is the length of r. Okay. Now, it's not like critical that you know how to derive that formula using the Pythagorean theorem. The key is to recognize, so the key point is to recognize that the signs will switch. Yeah. The signs switch. And, and we'll see that here in just a sec when we do some of these examples. Okay. If we were to take the center of a circle and it was at the origin, what's the coordinates for the origin? Good, 0, 0. So this would just be x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay, we could write the 0 inside of the parentheses, but that isn't going to make any, it's not going to make any difference on it. Okay, so again, the key point is switch the signs. So here's our equation. So therefore, the center of this circle, when you're pulling the number out of the equation, if it's a minus, that number is really positive. And if it's a positive, that number is really negative. So x minus 6 is, center is going to be 6, and the y coordinate would be negative 7. Okay? So our center is 6, negative 7. Now r squared is 25. So how do we get the r when we have r squared? Good. We're going to take the square root. In this case, are we concerned about the negative root? No, because it's a distance. So we just say the radius is 5. 
Okay, does that make sense? All right, so number two, what is the equation for the center? Are we doing anything to the x value here? No, so the coordinates for that would be 0. And minus 3, we need to switch the sign, so the minus 3 is really positive 3. Good. And so then, w would the radius be 9? No. Good. r squared is 9, so the square root of that would be 3. Okay, so go ahead and do 3 and 4. Okay, so for number 4, we're not adding anything to x and y, so the center there should be 0, 0. And then r squared is 16, so when we take the square root of that, that'll be 4. Okay, and then for number 4, the center is um, negative 1, positive 4. And r squared is 5, so the radius would equal the square root of 5. The square root of 5 is the most accurate answer. If you needed to graph that on a grid and you needed to approximate, then we could, you know, convert that to a decimal. All right, so let's turn the page, and what we're going to do now is we're just going to flip it around. So instead of given the equation, now we're going to write the equation given the center and the radius. So our center is hk, and our radius is r, and again, that standard form, it's x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals the radius squared, okay? So you don't have to like show the substitution and then change the sign. We can do all of that in one step. So we can say this would be x minus 3 squared. So since it was a, um, a positive, it's minus. Always plus in between. And then it would be y plus 2. And the reasoning for that is if you're subtracting a negative, it's like adding a positive. And then you could put it in as 12 squared, or we could put it in as 144. 121 is 11 squared. So, um, All right, so go ahead and do 6 and 7 and uh, see if you can write the equations for 6 and 7. Okay, so for 6, we got a positive 5 and a 0. So this is going to be x minus 5 quantity squared. Now, if you want to write the zero, it's not incorrect, but it's not necessary. Y squared, all right? And then some people have been asking, what happens when you take the square root of seven and you square it? Well, that's just seven, okay? So the square root of seven times the square root of seven is the square root of 49. The square root of 49 is seven. Other way you can think about it is the square root and the squared cancel each other out, okay? So the origin one, this would be x squared plus y squared. 2.5 squared is 6.25, okay? So again, we could leave it in that way, all right? So those are the just really straightforward questions. Sometimes we see those, right? You know, just write the equation, identify. Uh, those are, you know, just a matter of, they're not really hard. Eight and nine add a little bit of, complexity because they involve a prior topic. So for 8, it says, suppose we have this circle with this equation, and we're going to translate it. So when you look at this translation, what you should see is that we're sliding it to the right 3 and down 1. And what is the equation of the image of the circle? So here's what we have to understand. A translation is a rigid motion meaning will the size of it change so the radius will remain the same but will the center move if we're going to slide it the center has to move so the original center is going to be 2 negative 4 we're going to translate that to become good 5 negative 5 all right but our r squared is going to remain the same. So in the first one, r squared is 7. Since this is a rigid motion, the radius doesn't change, so r squared will still be 7 in the next one. So this would be x minus 5 quantity squared plus y plus 5 quantity squared equals 7. Okay. 
Does that make sense? Conceptually, sliding the center, but not changing the size of the circle, so our r squared value doesn't change. Okay, now number nine is a little bit different. We have a circle with this equation. Now it's going to be dilated with respect to the origin. We got a scale factor of two. So dilation means it's going to get bigger because it's two, and it's going to get further away. So are we moving the center in this case? Maybe. Depends on if the center is different than the origin. So let's start with that. What is the center of the circle that we're given? So negative 1, positive 4, okay? And then r squared is 25. So what is the radius of our, good, 5. Okay, now, think about that. Here's when it wouldn't change. A dilation, if it was centered at the origin and we were dilating from the origin, the center wouldn't move. But since this center is not located at the origin, we have to do a dilation of 2. What do we do to the x and y values when we dilate them? Yeah, we're going to multiply both of them by the scale factor. So this would become negative 2, 8. Okay. Now, when you dilate something scale factor 2, the length, how does the length change? Doubles. Good. So the radius would be 10. So therefore, r squared would be 100. Yeah, but just when we put it in the equation. So in the equation, this is going to be, remember, switch the signs. So negative 2 becomes plus 2 quantity squared, okay, plus y minus 8 quantity squared equals r, not r squared, equals 100, okay. Somebody was asking if I have a song for this. I don't yet have a song. Give me a few more minutes, I probably could come up with one. But at the current moment, I don't have a song. Um, so we'll just do one graph, and then I think you know you get the other point. But I, I do want to point out a couple things with the graph. So first of all, we're going to identify the center. The center is going to be 2, negative 1. R squared is going to be 16, meaning the radius will be 4. All right. So if you're graphing this, start with your center. In this type of graph, it's going to be very hard to use a compass. On like a Regents exam or quiz, if we're going to do that, we'll give you a larger graph. But for your homework and these assignments, when we're trying to save paper and write smaller grids and fit more questions on, start with your center and then just do the north, south, east, and west with your radius. So count up one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four. And if you just want to sketch it at this point, then I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, or you could use your precision circle tool. And, uh, oh, you don't have one of these on your paper? No. Oh. Listen, your children will. Okay. They'll be, they'll be all doing this electronically. It'll be amazing. Mind blown. Okay. And you'll go, when I was a kid, we had to blah, 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 and you can feel good about yourself. Okay, so the, um, this is our, this is the equation. Okay, now, just want to point out a couple common errors that I see on this question, okay, when we get to the graphing point. They're not any different than the common errors we see in other places, but I just, this is going to trigger something because, like, a certain number of people do this, Okay. Um, obviously, we could make sign errors with the center. That's something that could be common. All right. The other type of thing that people do is they forget to take the square root. Sometimes that error looks like instead of taking the square root, they divide by 2. So they get the radius of 8. Okay. The other one is they forget to take the square root and they think the radius is 16. And here's one that may happen. I hope it doesn't. You come up to me in a quiz and you go, Mr. Zazek, this graph is not big enough. 
and you're like, can I draw extra lines on here to, because the radius is 16, okay? First of all, if you do that on a Regents exam, that's not okay. That's a graphing error. What you would need to do is adjust your scale so that it could fit. If you needed to have it and get it to all to fit on there, you have to adjust the scale. If we write no numbers, we assume the scale is 1. But if you if you are going to write numbers, you know, you could go by twos, something like that. OK, so if you come up to me and you're like, this doesn't fit, the radius is 16 and it goes off the grid, I'm going to draw these on there and I'm going to say, well, do your best. And, you know, depending on your emotional state at that day, you'll, you know, respond in some manner of doing your best or being upset or something. Okay, so let's avoid that mistake, all right? And the way we avoid it is we take the square root for it there. Okay, I'll see you back here again in the next lesson where we will use completing the square. Completing the square is going to come in on this. Jack, you're a jukebox hero.